now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Hey, someone's in a big hurry. Wow, there goes Johnny. Seems like everyone's hurrying. That's right, everyone's hurrying to their grocer. They're rushing to get their swell new miniature Quaker model farm right away. This complete model farm is made up of 46 detail scale models in all. And these models are yours at no extra cost. There's no waiting. 46 different models of farm buildings, animals, and equipment are yours without delay. There's nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. Yes, there's no delay. Here's an offer of a lifetime made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The delicious breakfast cereals shot from guns. Listen for full details on how to get this complete new Quaker model farm. You'll hear it all in just a few minutes. Yes, listen. Learn how you get the sensational new mini... Quaker Model Farm. And it's yours without waiting a single day. Bert Marshall threaded his way through the crowded city room of the San Francisco Chronicle to his wife's desk. Hello, Neil. How's the hearts and flowers business? Don't be derogatory. What have you been up to? Me? Nothing at all. Well, then why does Mr. Meredith want to see us? He does? And notice that I said us. There must be something serious this Well, time. he probably wants to fire me. By asking you to be present, he'll save time. He'll fire me, you'll plead for my job, and he'll take me back. He'll cover the whole business in one operation. But why does he want to fire you? I give you my word, Nell. This time, I don't know. All right. Let's go and find out. Nell and Bert left the city room and walked down the corridor to the office of the managing editor. They stopped for a moment outside the door. And then Nell squared her shoulders and knocked. Who's that? It's the marshal's chief. Songs, dances, and funny sayings. Leave them outside and come in. Uh Uh-oh. Sit down. Uh, You, uh, you want both of us to sit down? That's what I said. I told you it was serious, Bert. It is? What's the biggest news story on the West Coast at present time? The Ainsley murder. That's all over. The Yukon gold rush. That's right. I'm going to send you up there to cover it. Huh? Gold to be had for the taking, the last frontier. There, there isn't a man, woman, or child in the United States who doesn't want to be there. They read every line we print about the Yukon. What do we give them? The garbled stories of a few miners who return. The Chronicle is going to be the first paper in the United States to have its own correspondent in the Yukon. Wonderful. I don't know how you'll get your stories back here. That's up to you, but it's your big chance. Well, thanks, Chief. Thanks very much. He wants your permission for me to go, Nell. Give it to him. I think he meant that I was to go, too. I did? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Meredith. She's Nell Marshall, not Nellie Bly. What's more, she's my wife. Exactly. Whither thou goest, I go. Not to the Yukon. You're not serious, Chief. Yes, I am. And I'll tell you why. Bert, you were the principal witness for the state during the Ainsley murder trial. Your testimony should have convicted you, Brennan. He was guilty. But the jury set him free. I wonder how much it cost him. Well, that doesn't matter now. He was acquitted. And I have it on good authority, perhaps I should say bad authority, the word comes from the underworld, that he intends to get even with you. That doesn't worry me. It worries me. I uh, may not sound like it most of the time, but I'm fond of you, Nell. Nell, he's human. We are not amused, Mr. Marshall. Well, neither am I. That's why I said it. 
We know you like us, Chief. And I don't want anything to happen to you, so I'm sending you to the Yukon. There's no reason why Nell uh, has to go. Brandon has a warped mind. If you aren't around, he may try to get even through her. The Yukon's rough country. Oh, that doesn't bother me. I want to go, Bert. You're sure? Positive. Okay, Chief, you're on. Your outfit's already being bought. Your passage has been booked on the Portland Bell. You'll sail in a week. Until then, you'll stay at my farm. And you'll be guarded every minute. Pinkerton men. I, uh, I won't see you again before you sail. No one will. So I'm going to say goodbye now. Goodbye and good luck to you. And so it happened that a week later, at midnight, Bert and Nell sailed on the Portland Bell. Well, we're on our way, Bert. It's adventure, Nell. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, I hope so. A month later, they reached the town of Whitehorse on the southern shore of Lake LaBarge. There, they rented a cabin and settled down to wait for the spring breakup. And there, Bert arranged for an interview with Roger Garrett, the most fabulous of the Bonanza millionaires. He talked with Garrett in his room on the second floor of the White Horse Hotel. And when the interview was over, he started down the corridor to the front stairs. Just as he reached them, he heard a noise at the other end of the corridor. A man was coming up the back stairs. Bert recognized him. Duke Brandon. He hurried down to the first floor and out of the hotel. A few minutes later, he reached his cabin. Nell! What's the matter? I saw him. Well, I hope you saw him. You had an appointment. Not Garrett, Duke Brandon. Oh, no. Yes. Are you sure? On the skin floor of the White Horse Inn. He was coming up the back stairs. I went down the front. Did he see you? I don't think so. Well, no one but the chief knew we were coming up here, and he wouldn't tell anybody. Brandon can't be following you. That doesn't make much difference, does it? He, he's here, and this is a small town. What are you going to do? Go to the police? Let me don't sense him, that. Brandon was acquitted of murder. There's no charge against him. Well, you could ask for protection. I've thought of a better idea. What's that? Leave here. For Dawson? Why not? We'll get to Dawson ahead of him. We'll stay there long enough to ride up the town, and then we'll catch a steamer for St. Michael in Alaska. Leave for home up there. I'm with you. Whatever you decide. I don't like running away, of course. It, it might be better to face Brandon and get it over with. Oh, no, Bert. It wouldn't only be Brandon. He... He probably has Link Tanner with him. And Link's a cold-blooded killer. No, I agree. Let's get out of here. All right. I'll write up this interview with Garrett, and we'll leave all our stuff at the post office for the next mail sled to pick up. Now I'll write to the chief and tell him what we're planning to do. Good idea. We can leave town tonight. An hour later, Bert was finishing his story, and Nell had started to pack their belongings when someone knocked on the door. Bert, you don't suppose... No. Just one of the sourdoughs come to pass the time of day. No. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. How do you do, Sergeant? Won't you come in? I go. I can come in to him. Well, of course. All right, boy. Shall I introduce myself? I know who you are. You're Bert Marshall, San Francisco Chronicle, and this is your wife. Well, that's right. How do you do, Sergeant? I see you're packing. You're planning to leave Whitehorse? Why, yes, Sergeant. Tonight. By dog sled? Yes. Snow won't last for another 24 hours. You'd better arrange for a boat and wait for the breakup. Well, there's enough snow to take us past the 30-mile river, and the Lewis and the Yukon are still frozen solid, aren't they? Yes, it's dangerous travel, though. Well, we thought... If that... I were you, Bert, I'd tell the sergeant why we're anxious to leave Whitehorse. I'd be interested. I'd like to know first why you're here. It'll be better if you follow your wife's suggestion. Better? Sergeant, there's a man who's just come to Whitehorse called Duke Brandon. My husband testified against him in a murder trial back in San Francisco, and... Well, we've been warned that he intends to... to make him pay for it. You mean that Brandon intends to kill your husband? He may try. We'd rather not give him the chance. I see. That's our story, Sergeant. What's yours? You had an appointment with Roger Garrett this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Yes. I was with him from 2 until nearly 3. What of it? According to the clerk at the inn, you were the last person to see him alive. Oh, he's dead? Oh, dear. How? What happened? He was perfectly all right when I left him. He was shot, Mr. Marshall. Straight to the heart. Murdered? Surely you don't think I had anything to do with it? No, I don't. But you the said... clerk saw you leave the hotel ten minutes before he heard the shot. Said you were running. I want to know why. Tell him. I will. Just as I was starting down the stairs from the second floor, I saw Duke Brandon coming up the back way. You're sure of that? Absolutely. 
He was dressed like a prospector, but I've seen too much of that face to make any mistake about it. You willing to identify him? He... He's the one... I'm only asking you to identify the man you saw on the second floor of the White Horse Inn. If you find him... Duke uh... Brandon's at headquarters. You've arrested him already? He's being held under suspicion. Will you come to headquarters with me? Oh, Bert. The same thing all over again. Why is it that you always have to get involved? Easy now. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll come with you, Sergeant. As soon as I get into my pocket. The two men walked down the main street to the northwest mounted headquarters. And the sergeant asked Bert to wait outside his office for a moment. Just uh, sit here. I won't keep you long. Well, that's all right. Oh, you're back, sir. Yes, Fred. Brought Marshall with me. I want to see Brandon. He's in the next room. All right, Brandon, this way. I hope you've come to your senses. Sergeant... You've got no right to hold me. I have a letter here that Garrett was writing before he died. And it says that he's expecting a call from you, that he's going to refuse to pay you any more blackmail. He says that if necessary, he'll go back to California and serve time, and he'll take you to jail with him. You heard what Link Tan and Baldy said? I didn't leave my cabin all afternoon. White Horse is a small town, and newcomers are watched closely. You were seen to leave your cabin. I never... What's more, you were seen on the second floor of the White Horse Inn at 3 o'clock. Whoever says that lies. Bring in the witness, friend. Right. Take him in now. Bert Marshall. We meet again. Be careful, Bert. Be careful. Is this the man? Yes. This is the man I saw. Wait, Brandon... We're charging you with the murder of Roger Garrett. You're a fool, Marshal, and you'll pay for it. We'll continue our story in just a moment. That's Bossy the Cow. You can stock your farm with model cows. And you can have your own model Shetland pony. Say, you can get 46 detail scale models in all for your farm. And they're yours at no extra cost. What fun! You build these exciting models yourself. Models like a big red barn with sliding door. Yes, you get a big red barn with a sliding door. To say nothing of a windmill that turns. Man, oh man, these models are skillfully designed. Think of it, doors and windows of buildings open and close. You get important farm equipment, too, like a tractor. You get everything, farmhouse itself, a hired man's house, hen house, cattle shed, and even a roadside stand. What's more, all this doesn't cost you a single extra penny. Here's all you do to get these exciting models. Hurry to your grocer. Ask for special new packages of Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. Yes, every model comes on new packages of the delicious breakfast cereals shot from gun. That's Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. There are eight different packages in all. And you get as many as six different models on a single package. What's more, every package has at least two or more models of farm animals. And talk about fun. All models are easy to build. They're pre-cut and scored. No paste or glue is necessary. And models stand by themselves. They're a gold mine of fun, games, and excitement. Act fast. Be first to own a complete Quaker model farm. There's no waiting, nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. Remember, these models come only on new packages of Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. And different models come on eight different packages. They're waiting for you right now on your grocer's shelves. Yes, your grocer now has them. Ask for Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. Hurry, there's no delay. Start building your Quaker model farm right away. Now to continue our story. Supper was on the table when Bert returned from headquarters. And although Nell asked no questions, her eyes were troubled as she watched her husband. Do you want to eat right away? I guess so. I'm not very hungry. You've been gone a long time. I've been looking around. Yes? I wanted to find out who Brandon had with him. Did you? Link Tanner and Baldy Macklin. There's nothing to connect them with the murder, is there? Nothing at all. Then, then they're free to do anything they want to. What can they do? Oh, I keep thinking of Link's face. Those cold gray eyes, that hard jaw and twisted mouth. Another murder won't help Duke any. 
We're safe enough, Nell. Forget about it. It was impossible for either Bert or Nell to forget about Link Tanner. But nothing more was said about him that evening. They went to bed at ten o'clock. At midnight, Nell woke up. The cabin was silent. She was unable to hear anything, and still there had been something. What was it that had awakened her? A scratching noise. Bert. What? Bert. Are you sure you bolted the door? Of course. It isn't much of a bolt. And that hole for the latch string. Somebody could reach through it with a piece of wire. If anybody did that, we'd hear them. I did hear something. At that moment, a cold breath of air touched their faces. The door was opening. Bert! There's a lamp on a table. Light it, Baldy. Yeah. Who's there? Stay right where you are. I can see you plain. You're covered. Do as he says, Bert. Yeah, well, there's your lamp. Link Tanner. Yeah. Now get in your clothes. You and the missus. Hurry up. Link watched Bert and Nell as they dressed. The gun held limply in his right hand. A twisted smile on his lips. You need your pockets, too. What's this all about? Now, don't ask questions. It'll waste time. Now put on your pocket. <clears throat> and sit down at the table and write what I tell you. I refuse. Shall I have Baldy beat him up, Mrs. Marshall? No. Go on, Bert. All right. <clears throat> Take all the junk outside and load it on her sled, Baldy. Harness the team, too? Yeah. Drive ours around and back. Okay. Now, write this, Bert. I didn't tell the truth. I only said what I you did. You want me to write word for word? Yeah. I only said what I did so as to get Duke Brandon in trouble. But I can't witness against him. You got that? Yes. Sign your name. There. Yeah, let's see. Where are you going to take us? You're going all the way to Alaska with Bolly and me. Yeah, this is okay. <laughs> Nell screamed as Link brought the butt of his gun down on Bert's head. The gunman turned to her. Now it's your turn, sister. No! <laughs> Load one of them on each sled, Bolly. I'll keep watch out in front. It was a quarter of a mile to the sergeant's cabin, and King was sleeping in the run out in back with the rest of the team. It may have been that he actually heard Nell scream, or it may have simply been another instance of uncanny ability to scent danger. At any rate, he woke up a growl deep in his throat. His rough stiff he raised his into the air. He howled. And from the distance came an answer. Then, without any further hesitation, he leaped for the top of the fence and scrambled over. King started down the street toward the Marshal cabin. When he reached it, he lay down in the shadows at the rear of the cabin next door. He saw Baldy carry the unconscious body of Nell out and put her on a sled, and then cover her with a bearskin robe. Then he carried Bert out and put him on another sled. All set, Link. King turned and ran back to his master's cabin, where he scratched on the door. What is it, King? Something wrong? King ran a few feet down the street and then stopped and looked back at the sergeant, inviting him to follow. All right, boy, I'll get into some clothes. It only took the sergeant five minutes to dress another five to reach the marshal cabin. But by that time, it was dark and there was no one around. King led the sergeant to the back and barked the sled tracks in the snow. They've gone, King? We'll make sure, fella. Ah, Life strings out. Gone. Not sure. Cabin's bare. We'll have to go after them, King. Wait a minute. Piece of paper here on the table. I didn't tell the truth. I only... That's strange. So as to get Duke Brandon into trouble. Bad grammar, King, and listen to this. I can't witness against him. That isn't the right way to use the word. Bert Marshall makes his living with words, King. He should know better. I think he does. I think he probably wrote what someone made him write, King. <laughs> you know all about it. Save us a lot of time if you could talk, boy. Well, we won't waste any. Come on, King, we'll get the team. Fifteen minutes later, King was leading the team through the town. On, King! On, your huskies! The sled tracks led to shore of the lake and then out into its frozen center where they swung to the north. Straight toward the end of the lake in the 30-mile river, King. The northern lights made the night almost as bright as day. 
and the racing sled made a long black shadow. But it was impossible to make out another sled on the trail ahead. They neared the end of the lake in less than an hour. No ice in the 30-mile, King. They must have headed to the shore. Even as the sergeant spoke, King swung toward a cabin on the bank near the opening of the river. The sergeant could see two sleds in front of it. They may have stopped here to get information about the inland trails, King. Matter, boy, couple ahead. The sergeant could see no one until he was less than a hundred feet away. Then, in the light spilling from the single cabin window, he saw a man lying in the snow. Okay, how are you, Husky? Double is right. It's Ben Howard. He's alive. Someone hit him over the head. I'll carry him into the cabin, King. What's that? Who are you? In a uniform. Sergeant Preston. Of course. How'd you get here? Dog sled, Ben. Those fools, they don't realize. Just because there's no ice in the 30 mile, they can't go any farther in a boat. Take it easy, Ben. What are you trying to say? Two men, Sergeant. They came here and they stole that raft I built. I saw them when they were launching into the river. I yelled at them and... And one of them came up here. He must have hit me. He hit you hard. Yeah, knocked me out. Exactly. They saw the open water. Two men, you said. See anything of a woman? No. She could have been on one of the sleds, though. It's getting clearer. Someone kidnapped Bert Marshall and his wife. They stole your raft, and they're heading north through the rapids. Don't they realize that as soon as they get to the Lewis, they'll run into ice again? Evidently not. You have a canoe, don't you? Uh, in the back of the cabin. Can I borrow it? Why, sure. Thanks. I got your raft back for you. Good. One king. Just as the sun was rising, the sergeant launched the canoe into the turbulent waters of the 30-mile river. The stream was dangerous, for though the water flowed green through the deeper channels, there were countless shoals where it boiled white, and even where it was deep enough for safety, great black rocks rose above the surface. The current shot the tiny craft downstream, and the sergeant called in all the resources of his perfectly coordinated muscles to control its course. King stood guard over the sergeant's knapsack and blanket roll in the bow. He understood the threat in every shoal and rock, and his deep-throated growls helped the sergeant's keen eyes. That's right, King. Keep watch for me. We're making better time than the raft. As I miss my guess, we'll find it piled up on one of those rocks before now. I see, King. Whitewater. Link and Baldy had found it difficult to navigate the raft from the moment they had started out. Turn it, Baldy. They had bound Bert and Nell hand and foot so both of them could operate the sweep at the rear of the raft. But even so, they cracked the rocks time after time. They were swept into shoal water, and although the raft was too sturdy to break up, they were held fast in the shallows until the water piled up behind them and swept them on. It was three hours after sunrise, and they had only covered half the length of the river when they saw the sergeant round a bend behind them. Look, there's a canoe. Yeah. Catching up with us. Yeah, what's the difference? Well, whoever it is, we'll see we got these two tied up. Go on forward and throw some blankets over them. Can you handle a sweep alone? A minute or two. It's easy going right here. Okay. In the next few minutes, the sergeant closed the distance between himself and the raft, and Baldy returned to the sweep. Hey, that's a red coat in the canoe. Grab hold. Did you hear what I said? we got to go between those two big rocks. Now, hold her steady. Half Mountain, he's after us. Once we're past those rocks, we can use our guns. Now, more to the right. Pull, Baldy. Both the sergeant and King could see that the raft was not going to make it through the narrow channel. That rock on the left's going to catch him, King. <laughs> The raft hit the rock on the left. The current drove it on, and the left side of the raft was lifted high in the air. And Bert and Nell, unable to use their hands, rolled down the slanting floor and into the water. The sergeant saw them and moved fast. He tied the painter of the canoe around his waist. He pulled off his boots and ripped off his coat. Then he dived overboard at the point where Nell and Bert had disappeared. Luck was with him, and he grabbed Nell's parka and pulled her to the surface. King had followed his master into the water. The sergeant could see that Bert had managed to jerk his hands free of the ropes that bound them as he went under. And now, downstream from the sergeant and Nell, he was fighting to keep his head above water. King swam to his side. Grab hold of King's harness. That's it. I'll just hold on. He'll get you in the shore. King worked with uncanny instinct. In spite of the great weight dragging on him, he edged out of the current inch by inch. But there was white water to the right, and he must wait until it was passed before he struck out for the bank. The sergeant had managed to grasp the rear of the canoe with one hand while he held Nell up with his right arm. But he was completely at the mercy of the stream. Can you hang on to the canoe? We'll have to let the current take us. We're coming to a bend that may sweep us into shallow water. It's so cold. We'll make it. Don't worry. It was a grueling experience. The icy water chilled them to the bone, and Nell lost consciousness. 
The sergeant's arm, supporting her dead weight, seemed to lose all feeling. But at the bend in the river, he kicked desperately toward the shore. And suddenly he felt solid ground beneath his feet. To stand erect was a different matter, with the current battering against him. But he finally managed to brace himself. And then carrying Nell and pulling the canoe, he staggered on to the shore. Fifty yards upstream, King had made it to the bank with Bert and the man who managed to pull himself out of the water. The sergeant took stock of the situation as he rested for a minute, and then he went to work. There were dry matches in his knapsack in the canoe, and he built a fire. There were two dry blankets. He wrapped one of them around Nell, who had recovered from her faint. Then he went to Bert's assistance. He cut the ropes on his feet and helped him back to the fire. He built a shelter of fir boughs around it. And at last, Bert and Nell stopped shivering and were able to tell the sergeant exactly what had happened to them. Well, you're all right now. As soon as you've dried out completely, you can make it back to Whitehorse along the banks of the river. I'll leave what food I have with you. You're going after Lincoln, Baldy? Of course. They can't get beyond the ice jam with the 30-mile flows into the Lewis. Be careful, Sergeant. They're both armed and they'll shoot to kill. I've kept my powder dry, Mrs. Marshall. Ready, King? Let's go, then. It was three hours later when they saw the raft piled up on the ice where the 30-mile joined the Lewis. It was almost immediately afterward that Lincoln Baldy opened fire from an improvised fort among the ice floes. It was not until sunset that the last shot was fired, with Link groaning and clutching a shattered wrist, while Baldy reached for the sky and yelled for mercy. All right, King, watch him, boy. It was the following morning when they joined Duke Brandon in jail, and it was only one week later that Duke was sentenced for the murder of Roger Garrett. You have been found guilty by a jury of your peers. I sentence you to pay the full penalty for your crimes. May God have mercy on your soul. No! No! I can't do this! Tell me what he deserves. The end of another trail, King. Bert, you and Nell will be safe now. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Fellas and girls, get a move on. Shake a leg. Hurry to your grocer. Ask for special new model farm packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Remember, there are eight different new packages. And you get as many as six different exciting models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals on a single package. There's no waiting, no extra cost. So get a move on. Get in on the fun. Start building yourself a swell model farm without delay. Remember, 46 keen detail scale models are yours. Get them now at your grocer's. They're yours for the asking when you ask for delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Jimmy's birthday cake. Jimmy was all ready to light six candles on his birthday cake when things began to happen. There was an explosion, a robbery, and a murder. King and I had a mighty exciting time and a narrow escape from death. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. <laughs> <laughs> 